Hey y'all. Today I have my friend Alex. He's actually a member of the Paleo University crew, but he's still kind of new to eating nutrient-dense food, right? Yes, absolutely. Just getting started. <laughs> so I figured I wanted to teach him a little bit about reading food labels, and I thought it would be a really good lesson for you guys as well to kind of hop in and see what I mean when I talk about reading food labels. So Alex, do you read food labels? Um, yes, I won't say it always impacts my, which <laughs> foods I choose okay. at the grocery store, but I generally do. Okay, yeah. so when you look at the label, what do you look for? Well, um, if there's too many words I can't pronounce, that's often just kind of a, a good, a good starter okay. point. Um, I'll look at, uh, at sugars often, okay. especially, um, especially, uh, refined okay. sugars. So are you I'll reading try to make the that ingredients or are you looking at the nutrition facts panel? Normally, the nutrition facts, like how many grams, right. so, how many grams of sugar. I know this might be hard for you guys to see, but this part, this nutrition facts part, that's the part we're talking about. Because there's a whole lot of other stuff going on in the label. We're talking about that nutrition facts. So you'll look mm -hmm. at the sugar and you'll see how much sugar is in there. Yeah. Okay. What else? Anything else? Um, I guess you know, in in terms of just the packaging, you know, I I, I do care if it says. Um, although I know it's kind of, it's not always accurate, but like. Uh, all natural, oh, yeah. organic, okay. the, buzzwords. You know, the, buzzwords, the buzzwords, and then I'll look back and I'll be like, organic this, organic that, organic, it's like everything's right. like organic, 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 and you know, I'm like, okay, well, this is probably better for me, right. you okay. know, and all that's, right. that's about it, really. Okay, all right, yeah. so that's really normal. A lot of times people look at that nutrition facts panel and they have one or two things that they think are important. Maybe it's sugars, maybe it's fat, maybe it's uh, sodium, depending. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you the very first thing though, when you look at a label, the first thing you want to know is the serving size. Because what does it matter how many grams of sugar are in there if you don't know how much you're supposed to eat? That's true. So if it says five grams of sugar and you eat the entire package, but it was five grams of sugar for only one serving and maybe a serving was a quarter of the package, you've in fact gotten 20 grams of sugar because you ate the entire package. So knowing the serving size is really the first step to being able to read that label. Okay. So that's where we start. At the end of the day, like let's compare. Okay, so you grab that mustard, sure. I'm gonna grab this one. So you let me know how many calories are in yours per serving. Well, what's your serving size first? Serving is um, one teaspoon. Okay, so is mine. Good, cool. so we can compare like to like. How many calories? Uh, 68 per serving. 68 calories per serving. Wow, this only has 10 calories per serving, so are you reading this correctly? <laughs> I think. No, that's serving per container. Oh, wow. You've got five calories. <laughs> Five, okay. So first off, learn how to read. Yes. That's the starting point. So you've got five, I've got 10. Okay, so not really that much of a difference, okay? So let's keep going, how much fat? Um, zero. Zero, okay, sodium. Sodium, 55 milligrams. 45 here. Carbohydrate? Zero. Mine has one. Okay, so protein? Uh, zero. I'm gonna get zero, mine has zero too. So if you compare these two and you just look at the facts panel, they're not really that different, right? They seem to be the same thing. So looking at that facts panel gives you some kind of impression of the story, but let's take a look at the ingredients. Okay. So read what's your first ingredient. Water. Mine is white distilled vinegar. Okay, okay. what's yours? Um, organic mustard seeds. Got mustard seed in mine as number two. Now, what do you have? Um, organic vinegar. Okay, I got water. So the first three ingredients are the same, right? Just slightly different order. The order that things appear on the label is actually has to do with the weight in the product. So the first thing that's listed, there's the most of it in the product. So the first three ingredients are the same, and that's generally how you'd make mustard in your house, right? Yeah. You have those three things, you're good. What's the fourth one for you? Uh, salt. Hmm, I've got crystallized cane sugar. What do you have next? Organic spices. Now I have salt. What do you have? And that's it. Okay, I still have three more ingredients. I have spices and I have garlic granules and something called xanthan gum. So while all things being equal, this isn't the worst thing you could ever do. It has more ingredients than that one. We also have sugar in here and this thing called xanthan gum, which is used for a lot of different things, but it's used to give it a certain thickness and a mouthfeel. Also that word xanthan gum, that's kind of a big, it's one of those big dictionary words. And one of my favorite things to say when it comes to reading labels is if you need a dictionary to read it, don't eat it. Because <laughs> it's probably not food. Right. So that's, you know, so that's a really interesting lesson with, with uh, mustard. And part of the reason why we're talking about mustard is because we're going to use mustard a lot. This is, gonna, this is one of your pantry essentials. So you have to know how to read the label properly to figure that out. So if you had just gone for sugars, right. those would have looked the same. And now I know calories versus servings per container. <laughs> Something, learn all the time yeah. which is awesome <laughs> so right and so that's the place to start and i do want to say too we're talking about things in packages and you see things in packages here 
Our whole goal though is to get you to eat things that are not in packages more often than not, right? That's really mm -hmm. what nutrient density is, but we can't get away from sometimes eating things in packages. So we have to learn how to read that label so when we do, we're making smarter choices. Definitely. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is bread. I know this seems really weird that this is sitting here, right? We're talking like Paleo <laughs> University and I've got bread. I've like never seen you around <laughs> bread. <laughs> I know, and it was, it was a very odd thing to have bread sitting right next to me, I'm not gonna lie. I haven't had bread like this in my life for a very long time. But I wanted to bring this here because at Paleo University, I'm not gonna dictate, we're not gonna dictate to you what you're gonna do every single day of your life. We're talking to you about trying to add nutrient density and teach you the lessons so that you can make the best choices that fit into your life. My recipes, the ingredients we give you, they're not gonna have bread in them. But if you do choose to eat bread, I wanna give you the skills so that you can pick bread that's gonna be better bread. Because, you know, again, you're gonna do your own thing and I'd rather teach you the lesson because really at the end of the day, all bread is nutrient poor. This doesn't really have a good place in a nutrient dense diet, but that doesn't mean that on a Saturday night, if you want to have some grilled cheese sandwiches that I'm going to stop you because once in a while is not the end of the world. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people that have, you know, spouses or kids or right. other people that maybe aren't willing to fully mm -hmm. commit to paleo. And right. so, you know, you, you still want to give the best possible exactly. for them. Exactly. You know. And I tell people too, that it's about making more smart choices more often. It's not all smart choices all the time. You know, I still, you know, eat those things that are not always the most nutrient dense for me, especially if it's like my birthday. I want to have a piece of cake like everybody <laughs> else. So let's talk about how to read bread labels. So you take that one okay. and I'll take this one. <clears throat> so we're just going to go through real fast. Um, what's the first ingredient in yours? Um, organic whole wheat. Okay. I've got whole wheat flour too, which is good because both of these are whole wheat bread. And if we buy bread that looks brown, but doesn't have whole wheat flour as the first ingredient, it's not whole wheat bread. You actually have to have the first flour be whole wheat flour. That's mm. the only way it's actually whole okay, wheat Okay, yeah. Bread. Or organic whole wheat flour, whole wheat organic flour. cracked whole wheat. Yep, so okay. that is in fact a whole wheat bread, and so is this one. Um, then as we keep going, I'm, just, I'm actually just gonna read down mine real fast, and you tell me how many ingredients, you count your ingredients while I read these out. Okay. I've got whole wheat flour, water, wheat gluten, sugar, yeast, wheat bran, soybean oil, salt, molasses, calcium propionate, uh, datum, monoglycerides, calcium sulfate, cellulose gum, monocalcium phosphate, soy lecithin, citric acid, grain vinegar, potassium iodide. <sighs> okay. All right. How many ingredients <laughs> did you have? I had 10, including organic whole wheat. Okay. All so right. I think you had about double. <laughs> probably. And if you probably caught too, there was a lot of Latin in there, which I'm pretty good at. I have some experience <laughs> with Latin, but um, datum and monoglyceride and calcium sulfate and cellulose gum, that's not, that doesn't sound like bread to me. Do you have any of those in yours? Uh, no, it's just, it's all organic stuff plus, you know, like uh, it's a little cane sugar, molasses, but everything just... Everything else is just flour yeah, and water just, and salt and yeast. Yeah, sunflower yeah. oil, sea salt. So yeah. at the end of the day, if, we're, if we are choosing to do bread, choose a bread like this because this bread doesn't have preservatives in it. This mm -hmm. bread is bread. It's going to go bad faster, true, but that's because it's really bread. And we want food that's going to go bad. That's not a bad, that's not a bad thing, actually, if it yeah. goes bad. <laughs> It's kind of disturbing when something's still fresh like six months later. Yeah, You're a little like, bit. What are they doing to this to actually... <laughs> well, and think about if it's doing it to your food, what's it doing to you when you eat it? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, and then we can go even farther and we can talk about some of our meats because we often hear, I don't know about you, but I know I hear a lot that um, basically processed meats, all processed meats are bad. I don't know if you've heard, have you heard mm -hmm. that before? I have. Yeah. And so when you think of processed meats, you know, I know I think of hot dogs. Do you think of hot dogs or do you think of other things? Uh, hot dogs definitely come to mind first. What else? Yeah. What else do you think of? What do you think of processed meat? Um, I guess hamburgers. Okay, hamburgers. That's interesting that hamburgers comes with as a processed meat. I don't really know why. I guess just because it looks processed. Processed? Yeah, but yeah. I, I guess I'm still not really like. You're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, what does that actually mean in terms of it being processed? Yeah. So typically, when we talk about processed food, most of the time. Anything that's going to come in a package, you suspect that it might have some kind of processing behind it. But it okay. also depends on where you draw the line because um, a chicken breast has actually been processed because it's been cut off the bird and it's especially a boneless, skinless chicken breast. You've taken it off the bone, you've taken it off the skin off of it. How many of us out there actually know how to break out, down a chicken that's whole? Yeah. Could, you buy a, could you buy a chicken and actually like get yourself a boneless, skinless breast? No. <laughs> right. I have to watch some videos on YouTube. <laughs> 
right. for that one. Well, I guess I would think like uh, prepackaged deli meats. Yeah. Okay. Would there we be? go. Yeah, that, yeah. So that's okay. that's more some of that that processed stuff. Um, but it, but you did bring up a good point, which is where do we draw the line on processing, right? Mm -hmm. Like I'm okay with the butcher going ahead <laughs> and making a boneless, skinless breast for me. It makes my life easier, and I didn't have to butcher the chicken. But yes, things like deli meat. Um, uh, pepperoni gets thrown in there, but definitely hot dogs and sausage. Those are two ones that we hear a lot about when it comes to processed meat. And it, they could be a problem, but they might not be a problem. So let's let's take a look at these, and I'm going to give you that one. I'm going to take okay. this one. So, um, you know, of course we love, you know, we, we think that everything that says organic or no, you know, does yours say anything like that you would be positive to you, that you would think would be positive? Um... Not preserved, okay. um, no added hormones, okay. no antibiotics, right. vegetarian fed. Okay, so um, all of those things on the right would yeah. be good sellers. You might say like, awesome, I want this one. So now let's flip it over and tell me, um, so mine, basically it has beef in it, it has water, and then it has some salt, spices, more salt, like more than like garlic and onion and paprika and celery powder. That's all I got in here, nothing else. Do you have sugar in yours? Yes, there is, um, after beef raised mm -hmm. without antibiotics, there's um, evaporated cane sugar, nutmeg, allspice, celery juice. That's actually not bad. Uh, lactic acid starter culture. Okay. Honey, vinegar, onion, and garlic powder, paprika. Okay. So, so it looks like the cane, I think the cane sugar is the only. Well, you got honey in there too. You got two oh, sweeteners. right. And this honey. is neat. Why are and, we sweetening it? Yeah, it's. <laughs> It's already pretty sweet. Right. So. Well, and it's also, it's, it's me. We don't need to sweeten it. So you've got two different <laughs> yeah. kind of sweeteners in your sausage right. or in your, in your hot dog rather, yeah. which is a little weird. Now, this is better than some brands I could name. <laughs> um, so, you know, all things being equal, but, we, but really my, my point is to not tell you to pick one brand over the other. It's to talk to you about how to look and how to read the label and to make sure that what you're getting is quality and that not all hot dogs are equal. Not all hot dogs are going to be equally as nutritiously poor as others because I'm not going to lie to you. I certainly buy these myself and I use these on nights when I just don't feel like kicking. Mm -hmm. I just heat up a couple of them and have it with some mustard. Not exactly the most fancy dinner, but life happens and you need to start to learn how to find these things. And in the beginning, it can be really difficult and it can feel like a lot of work to have to read every label, right? But what I challenge you to do is when you go to the store, you pick one thing that week that you want to find the brand that you like. Mm -hmm. And you just read the brands. Just go read all the hot dog. I did this the other day. Just read all the hot dog labels that day. And when you find one you like, that's the one you stick with. And then you don't have to do it again. Now you just go in the store right. and you know what to buy. Mm -hmm. One last one we're going to do is we're going to do this sausage. Okay? So you grab that one. I grab this one. Okay. This is a sausage that I do tell you guys to eat. This shows up in several recipes. This is one of my favorites. So we're gonna look at why I say that this one is great. Okay, so let's just see, let's just go from a sugar perspective because as we talked about, it's meat. We don't usually want meat, sugar in our meat. This one actually does have raw sugar in it. Does yours have sugar in it? Yes, it has maple syrup, okay. maple sugar, cane sugar, mm -hmm. brown sugar. <laughs> I think I covered it all. Okay, so this one's a little four, tricky. Yeah, it's four kinds. Four kinds, but this one is also a maple syrup flavored sausage. And I talk a lot about, you uh, know, when we do things, we want to avoid things that are flavored. So this is a flavored sausage. And so to make it flavored, you have to have all of those ingredients to give it that flavor. Mm -hmm. So that's not the same thing as this one. Now this one does have sugar in it. How many grams of sugar are on your label? Sugar, um, two grams per serving. Okay, two grams per serving. Now this one has zero grams per serving, even though it says sugar in the ingredient list, which might seem a little weird. How can it have sugar in the ingredient list but no sugars on the label? Well, there's a little trick. They can say zero if there's less than half a gram per serving. So if it says zero on the label, there could st still be half a gram per serving of whatever the thing is that hmm. they say is zero. It's a little trick that they can do. Uh, it's a legal trick. but. What, for me, why I, this isn't a concern that even though it says a little bit of sugar is first off, it's raw sugar. And so I know that it isn't quite as processed. It's not any kind of corn sugar or anything mm. like that. So it is a little bit more in a natural state. Now, from a perspective of how sugar is going to impact you, it's going to be the same, but a rather less processed sugar, no matter what. And beyond that, it has li so little sugar that they didn't actually, they didn't have to legally put it on the label, which says that it's not sweet 
the sugar in here is not going to keep me craving sweet things. The sugar in there probably will, because that's probably going to taste like maple when I eat it. And yeah. I'm sure it's delicious, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I'm probably going to be craving sweets because I'm starting to starting my day or eating that with sweet. This has no sweet in it. So it's, it is a little bit more complicated picture than just looking at the zero grams of sugar or that it has sugar in the ingredient label. Not all sugar all the time is going to kill you. We have to learn how to use those things in a proper full nutrient dense diet because at the end of the day this is still a really good nutrient dense option and you're not going to continue to be craving sugar <laughs> okay questions do you have any questions for me after all of that um well i guess so in in terms of in terms of sugar like yeah. and, um what what is the best type of sugar like i, I know mm. you're not supposed to have that much but if there is a little bit in it what's yeah so what's what i kind? always go for if i if i want if something's gonna have sugar in it i want it to be raw cane sugar because raw cane sugar I, i've actually done it before you can buy sugar cane and you can process it in your own kitchen and so to my mind it's a little bit more of a natural kind of thing and i know all sugars are still going to impact the body you're going to have a um a insulin response it's going to be you know bad news if you have too much of any of them however mm -hmm processing sugar have you ever eaten you've eaten corn right right yeah okay it's a little sweet is it as sweet as like a coke is no 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 so the not. amount of processing they have to do to that corn to get that high fructose corn syrup which is derived from corn mm. is a lot they have to do a lot of boiling and and refining and bringing it down and that's actually true if you just see the word sugar on a label without any kind of qualifier without it saying cane or anything it could be beet sugar and beets have to go through a fair amount of processing to get it down into that state as well. Now, I'm sure that there are those out there who could quibble a little bit with my line of distinction on processing. But for me personally, raw cane sugar, brown sugar, um, honey and maple syrup, those are all things that personally I'm going to go for because I feel like they take a little bit less processing to get them to that point. Gotcha. Knowing full well that if I put a teaspoon of honey in my tea, I'm going to have the same response as if I put, you know, a teaspoon of some kind of fructose sweetener, hmm. okay? My body is still gonna be wired out on sugar. Yeah. Does that answer your question? It does. Make sense? Absolutely. Okay. All right, y'all. If you have any questions on reading labels, please reach out to us. Hopefully this was clear. Hopefully you understood. And you know, I'm sure this is not the last time we're gonna be talking about labels. Thanks for joining us.